You're watching WYLN TV 35. Now, from the area's leader in live local news, this is WYLN News, the area's number one source of live local news and information in Luzerne, Schuylkill, Carbon, and Columbia Counties. WYLN News starts now. Good evening, and thank you for joining us on WYLN News. I'm Julia Wiegand. A Harrisburg man has been charged for the death of his husband in Columbia County. State police at Bloomsburg were called to mile marker 234 along Interstate 80 eastbound just after 10 Sunday evening in Mount Pleasant Township. An investigation determined that the victim, Julio Cesar Perez, got into a fight with his husband, Andres Garcia Ars of Harrisburg, while traveling along I-80 westbound. Garcia Ars began driving at a high rate of speed, drove off the roadway into the center median, began assaulting the victim inside the vehicle, and continued striking him outside of it. Perez then tried to flee onto the I-80 eastbound lanes, but was struck by a utility trailer and two more vehicles, and was pronounced dead at the scene. Garcia Ars was arraigned on charges of aggravated assault, involuntary manslaughter, and recklessly endangering a person. He was then remanded to Columbia County Prison. A former Tamaqua area high school football player headed to court this morning. Magisterial District Judge Thomas Vinos bound all charges against 18-year-old Zachary McGlinchey for the Court of Common Pleas during this morning's preliminary hearing. McGlinchey was arraigned on $20,000 unsecured bail under the stipulation that he does not have any contact with the victim. McGlinchey was charged back in March on misdemeanor simple assault and harassment after allegedly attacking a juvenile in the school's football house. Since the charges are in county court, McGlinchey can either plead guilty or enter a not guilty plea and request a trial. Two juveniles were detained for numerous thefts in Hazleton. Hazleton police were observing the areas of North Cedar and East Hemlock Street early Sunday morning. Two individuals dressed in black were seen approaching a vehicle on East Hemlock Street and attempted to open the door. An investigation two juvenile males had stolen a vehicle along with various credit cards from an unlocked vehicle. The vehicle and credit cards were recovered and returned to the owner. Meanwhile, juvenile allegations are to be completed on both males. A Hazleton man was arrested and charged with strangulation. Troopers were called to the Hazleton Apartments in Hazel Township just before 10 a.m. back on May 20th to investigate the reported strangulation of a 22-year-old female. The investigation led to the arrest of 35-year-old Anthony Brotsman on charges of strangulation and simple assault. He was arraigned and remanded to Luzerne County Prison after being unable to post $15,000 bail. A preliminary hearing is scheduled for this Thursday. An Ashland man is in custody after a six-hour-long police standoff Sunday afternoon. PSP at Frackville were sent to the 1000 block of Brock Street for a disturbance call. Upon arriving to the scene, troopers learned that 49-year-old Frank William Paul had recently returned to the house and started causing damage. At the time of the incident, Paul was out on $75,000 cash bail, stemming from a felony incident back on May 20th and had an active felony arrest warrant from an incident on Saturday. Over the course of six hours, Paul refused to listen or comply with troopers' commands, but eventually exited the residence. He was taken into custody and arraigned, with bail set at $150,000 cash only. State police in Dunmore are searching for a 15-year-old girl who's been missing since Sunday. Ireland Chalk was last seen at 3.45 Sunday afternoon riding her bicycle, which is turquoise in color with a white seat, on Spring Street in Dunmore Borough. She's being described as a 5'5 white female weighing 115 pounds with black hair and blue eyes, and was last seen wearing blue pants and a white tank top. Anyone with information on her whereabouts is asked to contact Dunmore Police at 570-343-0851 or dial 911. A hearing is underway in Commonwealth Court to decide if mail-in ballots that aren't dated will or will not be counted. 
It all has to do with Republican Senate candidate David McCormick filing a lawsuit against Pennsylvania election officials. He argues undated mail-in ballots should not be counted. The too close to call Republican race for the open U.S. Senate seat in the state between McCormick and Dr. Mehmet Oz has them separated by about 900 votes after the primary election earlier this month. The percentage triggered a recount by state law. Counties may have already started the recount process, and if they haven't, must start tomorrow. They must complete the recount by noon on June 7th and submit the results to the Department of State by noon on June 8th. The next step for those interested in filling a vacant Luzerne County Council seat will be public interviews. Eleven Luzerne County Republicans submitted their names for consideration. Council expects to begin the public interviews when they were scheduled to meet today at 5 p.m. A vote on the appointment is planned for June 14th. The seat opened when Robert Schnee won a special election to serve as state representative in the 116th district. The public hearings will be held at the Luzerne County Courthouse, and instructions to view online can be found at luzernecounty.org. The Pennsylvania Public Utility Commission reminds consumers electric generation costs will increase starting tomorrow, June 1st. Through its ongoing Call Utilities Now campaign, the Commission reminds that direct conversations between struggling customers and utilities are the best first step in addressing outstanding bill balances and discussing utility assistance programs. Consumers should also consider shopping for competitive electric generation supplies at PAPowerSwitch.com. Pennsylvania State Police Troop N arrested 63 people for driving under the influence during the four-day Memorial Day holiday enforcement period. From May 27 through May 30th, troopers investigated 43 crashes, five of which were alcohol-related. One crash resulted in a fatality. Troopers also issued traffic citations over the long weekend. 963 for speeding, 107 for child passenger seat violations, 154 seatbelt violations, and 2,053 for other violations. Beyond traffic citations, troopers made 49 self-initiated criminal arrests, which include but aren't limited to involuntary manslaughter, aggravated assault, terroristic threats, firearm violations, and fleeing and eluding. Coming up on WYLAN News, a successful Memorial Day weekend across our viewing area, plus some upcoming events to pencil into your schedules. But first, we'll take a look at our five-day forecast brought to you by the WYLAN Weather Kids. We'll be right back. My name is Alexander Bonomo, I'm 12 years old, and get your umbrellas out, because tomorrow's WYLN forecast is rain. We want your child to be our WYLN weather kid. Your child can be our feature weather reporter of the day on WYLN News and WYLN social media posts just by using your smartphone or any video recording device. It's easy. All ages are welcome, from toddlers to teens. To find out how, go to the weather section of WYLNTV.com or look for our post about it on the WYLN News Facebook page. Submit your Weather Kid video today. You always get a feel-good shopping experience at Grand Central in Hazleton. Have you ever experienced that super pushy salesperson who follows you all around? Not here. Who wandered around that big box store looking for help in the appliance department only to find the pink guy? Not here. And we have an experienced courteous sales staff here to help you find the perfect mattress, piece of furniture, or appliance with no pressure. And don't forget, everyday low prices. You always get a feel-good shopping experience at Grand Central in Hazleton. Penn State Hazleton is improving the lives of others, starting in our community. Providing degrees that meet the needs of the area. Fueling entrepreneurship and contributing more than $36 million annually to the state's economy. Researching the health of our local ecosystem on the Susquehanna River. Together, our impact keeps growing, backed by the strength of 24 campuses and 700,000 alumni.
Like and follow WYLN News on Facebook for the midday WYLN News update, posted between noon and 2 p.m. Powered by Lehigh Valley Hospital Hazleton, the all-new emergency room at Lehigh Valley Hospital Hazleton is nearly double the size. Our updated facility features all private rooms, the latest technology, and a quicker, easier check-in process. Lehigh Valley Hospital Hazleton, your partner in ER care. The weather cooperated for Memorial Day events held across our area, some of which had been postponed for two years due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Numerous communities held parades and other events Monday to honor those who died in service to our country. It was also a day to enjoy local parks and other outdoor events with family and friends. It doesn't get any sweeter as the MPB community players will present sweet music and treats at their upcoming production. The pop concert, The Sweet Sounds, will benefit Catholic Social Services on Saturday, June 4th and Sunday, June 5th at the Family Center located at 106 South Church Street in Hazleton. Ticket prices start at $8 for adults and $4 for children and can also be purchased at the door for $7 and $3. Both performances will begin at 7 p.m. and reserved seating is available by calling 570-459-5076 for the show. Our WYLAN sports crews gearing up for one of our favorite weekends of the year. The Weatherly Hill Climb will be returning to the circuit next weekend as it has time and time again since its 1961 debut. Racers will be making the trek from all over to head up the mountain next Saturday and Sunday June 10th and 11th. And as tradition has it, W Island will be broadcasting live from Weatherly next Saturday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. So rev up those engines and tune in next Saturday for all the live local action right here on W Island TV. Coming up on Woodside's News Choice, we talk stalkers and thieves on this Trooper Talk Tuesday. Plus, leading the way, part two. And stay with us for everything else we have lined up for you later tonight on W Island TV. This is it, the don't miss, can't miss weekend of the year. It's NASCAR time at Pocono Raceway. And you gotta be there. This is summertime. This is racing. This is the place to be. This is Pocono. NASCAR weekend, July 22nd to 24th at Pocono Raceway. You gotta be there for this. Abby is still perfecting her sidekick, and her job is just for show. But for Abby, this is a remarkable day, because Abby recently defeated a real foe, cancer, when she partnered with Lehigh Valley Riley Children's Hospital, a children's hospital close to home with more than 30 pediatric specialties. Take a bow, Abby. You deserve it. Lehigh Valley Riley Children's Hospital. Your health deserves a partner. Something is out there. What it is, no one knows. However, since its first sighting, there have been numerous reports of strange lights in the night sky. Some say they are extraterrestrials, flying saucers. But, to all of those seemingly unrelated uncertainties, there is one common thread. Soul Space Men on WYLAN TV 35. Thursdays at 1.30, series at 4, Sundays at 9. Your guide to everything Pocono Mountains is PTN, the Pocono Television Network. Watch PTN on WYLN. Attention. WYLN viewers, WYLN TV can now be seen on the Hazleton Service Electric Cablevision HD tier, channel 507, and over the air at 35.1. WYLN. We're your local network. There's no better place to shoot than Whitetail Preserve. Their skeet, trap, and sporting clay fields are professionally designed, and all stations are handicapped accessible. Whitetail Preserve has resident shooting instructors certified by the NRA in shotgun, rifle, pistol, home safety, and personal protection in the home. 
Whitetail can also cater any size event, whether it be a private party, corporate event, or wedding. Call 570-384-2314 for more information. Did you know that WYLN News provides news updates every weekday afternoon at 1, 3, and 5 here on TV and on social media? Did you also know you can watch WYLN News on the go by visiting our website or YouTube page? Now more than ever, WYLN is your local news leader. Welcome to Trooper Talk Tuesday. With me is Trooper Anthony Petrosky, Troop in Hazleton. And Trooper Petrosky, I didn't know what this was. A friend of mine ordered one for her, and she said, I have an extra one. Would you like it? And I said, what is it? And she said, it's a key tag so that if you can't find your keys, you go on your phone, you go to the web, the, to the app, and it will start to bling so that you know where your keys are. But now I'm finding out there's more to this? There is. So this is actually a tracking device to be able to find the keys. But what we're seeing from law enforcement is people are using these tracking devices to find people. Wow. That's what we're seeing. Now, we're not having a lot of cases like this in the Hazleton area. But, you know, across the Commonwealth, we've had instances like that. So basically, you explain how they work. You put it on something in case you lose it. You, you know, you put it in a bag. You put it in your purse or your keys. If you lose it, there's an app. It basically walks you to the location of them. Mm -hmm. It's also good in case, you know, something gets stolen, we're able to find it. But what we're seeing is, is that's very small. That's tiny. There's all different kinds of these, these air tags, and they're not very big. So what we're seeing is, is people can put them inside a purse without somebody knowing, inside a backpack, onto a vehicle, and they're using them as tracking devices, and they can pull up on the app and See? find out. There we go. That's how it works. There it is. Wow. And so you can actually use it to find somebody's location. Wow. And they can buy this, put it somewhere in a vehicle, mm -hmm. and... Hard to detect. I mean, you could Awful, put it. Hard. You could put it. In, you know, in, in a glove box somewhere. You could put it under the carpet somewhere in a vehicle, or even underneath the car somewhere. You could duct tape it underneath the car. You know, wow. and it's dangerous because if you're talking about, you know, a lot of times when people go through divorces, they're separating. You know, things can get really messy. Now we have PFAs involved, things like that. Now somebody could put one of these trackers on their vehicle and keep tabs on where they're going. So it, it is very dangerous. So what can you do about that? Is there, because I, I would guess that that's crossing the line into stalking? Yeah, so that would be illegal. You cannot legally put one of these on somebody's clothing, on their purse, on their vehicle without their knowledge. That's illegal. You could be charged with you know, stalking, things like that, harassment. Uh, yeah, it, it's 100% illegal to do that. Now, if you're buying it and using it like you are, or you know you have you have it in your purse in case you lose your purse, or your wallet in case you lose your wallet, that's what they're there for. That's what they're supposed to be used for. If you are using one of these to try to track somebody, you're breaking the law. And what do you do in that case? For example, there are people who have had stalkers. Sure. What do you do? Well, if you find one of these, and it's not yours, you need to contact the police department that covers the jurisdiction where you live. And we will do an investigation on who has that, you know, who, who, we'll do interviews, we'll talk to you. Who do you think would have done this? You know, who was with you recently? Who has access to your vehicle? Things like that. We'll do our job, we'll investigate, we'll find out who did it, and we'll arrest that person. But if you find it, don't just assume it's nothing and throw it away and not think anything twice about it. Contact police, we'll do an investigation. And Staying on the same subject of stalkers, even without these, again, you have internet. Sure. You have so many. So what can you do about that kind And you of know, stuff? social media, there's ways to geotag your location, meaning if oh. you're at a coffee shop and you post yeah. something on social media, can actually tell the people which coffee shop you're at. Um, so, you know, you're letting people know two things when you do that, where you are and also where you're not. 
Because if you're on vacation in Ocean, Ocean City and you post on Facebook, on Twitter and Instagram, you're on vacation, yeah. yeah, it's great. You're telling people you're on vacation. You're also telling people, I'm not home. Come break into my house. So, you know, we have to be careful. We've got to think before we do this stuff. When you're on vacation, don't post the pictures until you get home. Wow. You always well, got to think ahead. Well, and again, <laughs> it's, it just it's a shame. seems, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a shame, but we have to have that. Because think about it. Most people use social media. Mm -hmm. Well, so do the criminals. They use it too, and they see these posts. Yeah, and I guess, again, a lot of them are just random. Sure. Where you wouldn't think who would be looking at me. Right. But sometimes you just don't know. You just don't know. So post the pictures when you get home from vacation. Also, have your social media pages in private mode, not public. This way only followers can see your information. And along the same lines, if someone is having a problem with someone, can they go to the police or do they have to go to the social media site and say someone is harassing me? Well, it's always good to report them on social media, but, but if there's an issue that's rising to the level of harassment, contact police will do an investigation. Wow. So there you go. I didn't know that there was more to my little chirpy thing. Thankfully, you're just using it for your keys. Yeah. It's... But if I find that on my uniform, I know where to go. <laughs> Shh. I won't tell them that. Thank you, Trooper Absolutely. Anthony Petrosky, Troop in Hazleton. Always a pleasure to have you here with us. Such good information Absolutely. on Trooper Talk Tuesday. SJ Kowalski is your Mitsubishi Diamond Contractor. They can install a Mitsubishi Electric, Mr. Slim, ductless heating and cooling system. Mr. Slim systems are designed to make any living space in your home inviting. You can have a different temperature control for every room in your home. The money-saving technology can save you 25 to 50% on your heating bill. For Mitsubishi, Renai, and trained comfort specialist, call SJ Kowalski at 570-455-2600. Your guide to everything Pocono Mountains is PTN, the Pocono Television Network. Watch PTN on WYLN. PPW Nation, get ready for the best of PPW Season 2. Join Paul Bow, E. Julius Kuyper, Alexander Bravado, Tom Mitchell, and Alex Watt as we take you down memory lane and relive some of the best PPW matches of all time. Saturdays at 5 p.m., Sundays at 10 p.m., only on WYLN. This week on Let's Talk Chiropractic, let's talk about some practical tips. We see so many thousands of patients here. Summer tips, traveling tips, how to keep your body healthy. So stay tuned, we'll give you a better summer. You always get a feel-good shopping experience at Grand Central in Hazleton. Have you ever experienced that super pushy salesperson who follows you all around? Not here. Or wandered around that big box store looking for help in the appliance department only to find the pink guy? Not here. And we have an experienced courteous sales staff here to help you find the perfect mattress, piece of furniture, or appliance with no pressure. And don't forget, everyday low prices. You always get a feel-good shopping experience at Grand Central in Hazleton. When you see news happening in your neighborhood, call WYLN News at 570-459-1869 or email us at news at WYLNTV.com or send us a message on social media through Facebook. WYLN, we're your local network. WYLN is going behind the scenes to learn more about the lives and goals of our local leaders. So, Bodie Morin is leading the way into part two of this week's series. Welcome to Leading the Way, and we are spending the week with Bodie Morin, and he was telling us yesterday that he is involved in engineering, but it's not train engineering, it's mechanical engineering, mm -hmm. and then he got bit by the history bug. Mm -hmm. So you're in Washington, you're working there, 
Now, how do you get from Washington, D.C. to Northeast Pennsylvania? <laughs> well, that's a 20-year story. Oh. Um, so while I was in Washington, I was thinking about going to grad school. And I was going to maybe get a law degree or an MBA. And then I read this pamphlet that talked about the field of industrial archaeology. And that, um, that I had that exact same reaction because wow. I had never heard those two words before. Never and together. It, <laughs> right, and it sounded very interesting. And I called the university, which happened to be back at Michigan, Michigan Technological University, and asked them about you know, this program. And uh, they gave me a little description. And within three months, I had quit my job and moved back up to Michigan. This is actually up in the Upper Peninsula. Um, so that's how I started um, sort of studying history. So industrial archaeology is a combination of historical archaeology and the history of technology. So it's a combined degree. So we study these two fields and then you wind up with this very, a more cultural understanding of, of technology. So again, this is something that I've never heard of. Mm -hmm. You never heard of it. Mm -hmm. And if you, you must deal with a lot of young people today do they have exposure to things like this now, or is it now something else? Has it evolved into something else? Well, the, the field itself has evolved. Um, back when I got into it, we were sort of at the tail end of a, of a boom period, I guess you could say, in industrial archaeology. So it's, it's, you know, it's tied to the recognition of these significant historic landscapes that were then being redeveloped. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea that you want to study these places before, they, before they're redeveloped in case there's information, historical, important historical information that would get lost. Um, so by the time I got into it, we were sort of, you know, peaking a little bit uh, where we had sort of identified all of the important historical industrial sites um, and documentation had been going on for years. Um, so now the field has evolved more into industrial heritage. So now that you've documented and understand these places, what are you going to do with them? How do you preserve them? How do you interpret them? How do you let the public get involved and engage? So that's kind of where the field is now. All right, we'll hold that thought okay. because when we come back tomorrow, Bodhi is going to expand more on that. And if you have some kids who might be interested in history, something you mm -hmm. might want to think about, and they might too. We'll be back tomorrow with more Leading the Way. And that's the news. Remember, the source matters now more than ever. Catch all the latest on our Facebook page, YouTube page, or at wylandtv.com. Stay with us. A look at today's weather is next, right here on WYLN-TV.